Hey guys, I'm Timothy from Cinema Content and welcome to another video. Today I'll show you how to make a collab. This tutorial will not go into any shared project functions, so this will focus more on if you need to make a collaboration with someone without sharing the same project files. So maybe you work in different editing softwares or maybe the footage is too big to share online. Personally, I added a lot of different videos that could be commercial work, music videos or short films, but uh, primarily we're gonna work with if we're gonna make some fan edits like trailers or tributes or just movie mashups in general. I'll be making this tutorial in Premiere Pro, but uh, as I said before, you don't need to use the same editing software, so as long as you have access to the most basic editing tools, you should be fine and could be following along. If you're working with another editor, you are gonna be sending and exporting a lot of video, and as you may know, every time you export something and then export it again, the quality will get worse and worse. In order to minimize as many exports as possible, one of the editors will take the role of having the main timeline. The editor that takes the main timeline will be responsible for most of the important steps in this. So assembling the whole edit when it's all done, um, stuff like color grading, watermarks, outros, whatever you need for the video. And I do recommend that the person with the most experience takes the role of having the main timeline because there is a lot of work and a lot of responsibility to have that. So for this video, we're gonna go through three different options of how you can make a collab. I'm not really a professional, I just make videos, it's fun, people like it. Don't take my words as anything official. This is just my experience, how I feel like stuff is easier when I'm gonna what I'm gonna edit, just tag along, and if you don't like it, it's all up to you. Option one, the structured parts. This step is the best for organizing, uh, it's usually the fastest way to, and it requires less communication. So it's really a way to make things simple and easy if you're uh, new to this collab thing. So if you're a beginner with collabs, I would recommend starting out with option one. Option one, step one, making the guideline. Let's say I am editor one, uh, the editor with the main timeline and I need to decide what uh, part of the song that I'm gonna edit and what part of the song that my friend editor 2 will be editing. So what I usually do is I split up the song into 10 to 20 second parts. Uh, if you want to cut the song or edit the song in any way, uh, do that before we start the guideline. I want to make sure that both editors get varied parts, not one editor gets all the action filled parts of the song and then one editor gets all the build up and maybe the emotional more maybe boring parts of the song. A smart way to make sure that both editors get the same amount of screen time is to just copy all parts, place them on top of each other and then you can see the total time of each editor's part. And that's just to make things fair. When I'm done with splitting the song into different parts of editor 1 and editor 2, I'll export the song with what I will refer to as the guideline. Step 2, the editing. The fun stuff. So I send the guideline to editor 2, if he likes it, we can start the editing. As editor 2, you bring the guideline into your editing software and you put it together uh, on a layer on top of everything. You can enable or disable the guidelines whenever you just want to check that you're doing the right part. Or you could just change the blend mode to something like screen and then only the text will be available and be as an overlay on top of your clips. The good thing about this option is that both editors can now be working without the other editor being present. So they can work separately on uh, their own parts. That's why this option won't require as much uh, communication as the other options. Editor 2 finishes his parts and sends the entire timeline even with the blank parts for um, Editor 1. This is to make it easier for Editor 1 to sync everything. So when you export everything as Editor 2, remember to not use any color grading or watermarks because that's going to be a thing that Editor 1 is going to do later. But if you need any color correction on specific clips just to get a uh, certain effect on uh, whatever you're doing. Of course, uh, just don't put any color grading on top of everything that you're doing. So as editor two, you export the whole timeline in two versions. So one regular version with everything enabled and then one version without the music. And then it's time for step three, which is assembling the parts. And further on, it's only for the editor one, which has the main timeline. Editor two, good for you, uh, you're done. When editor one receives both versions from editor two, he can put uh, the version without the music into his own timeline, the main timeline. As editor one, just remove everything blank so that editor two's part can fit in nicely. You can either cut it manually, or if you're in Premiere, you can unlink the video and click scene edit detection uh, to automatically split everything. 
Thanks to having Editor 2 part without music, Editor 1 can now edit all the audio if anything needs to be fixed. It doesn't necessarily mean that Editor 2 has done anything wrong, it just means that the audio can sometimes need to be adjusted in order for everything to fit together. And then on to step 4, which is the final touches. Now it's time to add some color grading and watermarks if that's what both of the editors want to do. If editor 2 has some watermark, you can just send it to editor 1. I recommend using watermarks in your videos because it's easy to tell then what editor has done what part. So this is good if you ever need to show your edit in a portfolio or anything like that and you need to really take credit for what you've done. If everything's added, you're good to go. Editor 1 sends the final export to editor 2 and they can both upload. The end. Then on to option 2, which is mixed parts. I feel like option 2 gives uh, more personality to what you're doing and it can feel more fun and engaging when uh, working together with the other editor. But it can take more time, so if you have a deadline or something like that, it, this option is probably not for you. So basically you just work together to fill the entire timeline. So uh, there's no specific parts and you both can just fill in clips wherever you want to fill in clips until the edit is done. So just like option one, you decide which song you want to edit to and then if you want to make your changes and edit or cut the song, you do that. You'll still need one editor to take the role of having the main timeline and we're going to call that editor one just as in option one. So let's say editor two uh, adds a few clips into his timeline and then he wants to send that to... Uh, editor one. You would then just need to export those parts, uh, one version with everything enabled and then one version without the music. So just like in option one, editor one can take those clips, put it into his timeline, take it out and do whatever he wants with the audio and everything. And I don't think there's much more to it. You just keep on doing this that editor two sends some clips to editor one and then editor one fill in clips himself and then you just keep on working until the, the video is done. The last steps are the same as well, uh, editor one just adds whatever you want in the edit, so if you want a color grading or a watermark or an outro, just go ahead. But as I said, there are a lot of more problems that you may run into when doing uh, this option. For example, maybe both editors try to put a clip on the same part of the song. Then you have to discuss on what clip to keep and what clip to throw away or, you know, change place and, and that can take some time it's gonna take a lot of communication and it can be really messy if you're bad at communicating maybe you both run out of ideas and you put in some clips and then you think yeah after these clips the other editor has to put in somewhere there but he thinks the same way that yeah those clips are there maybe he has some other plan for that so if you don't communicate enough you could just both be sitting there and expecting the other one to put scenes in that's why i recommend that you're only doing this option if you know the editor personally moving on to option three which is a combination of option one and two so we're gonna have some structured parts and some mixed parts this could be relatively organized uh, it's still a good mix of all options and you still take time but it's what I find to be the best viewing experience of a collab. So you have a lot of structured parts, um, but you will do the beginning and the end as mixed parts. And of course you can do whatever you want to discuss with your partner if you want to have a part in the middle as well that is mixed you. It's up to you, but this is, this is how I do it. So the structure would look like this. The first 20 seconds is made by both editor one and two. The next 20 seconds is by editor one, the next is by editor two, Next is by editor 1 again, and then back to editor 2. And then the last 20 seconds, the outro of the video, is made by both editor 1 and 2 again. So by doing this, the beginning and the end feels more mixed and personal, so it feels more engaging when you're working on one part together with another uh, editor. Still, the majority of the video will be structured and you will have different parts that are yours and that you can fill with your editing style, but then you can have the beginning and the end a mix between the two editors and really get that feeling of of connection with the whole edit. As usual, one editor has the main timeline, the other editor sends his clips with both music and without music. And that's basically it. You just follow along, you can make a mix of whatever option you want to do. Uh, it's really up to you and as I said before, this is nothing official. I haven't looked at anyone else that has done in these specific ways. This is just some tips and tricks that I've uh, gathered as I've done a lot of collabs. If you're gonna make a collab with someone, feel free to share this video and show whatever option you wanna use. So 
both you and your editing partner will know exactly how the structure is going to be on your video because that can be a little confusing sometimes <sighs> that was basically everything i had to say for today so thank you everybody so much for watching as usual and i'll see you around